All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. And thank you for joining us. Y'all want to say hello? Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Feel Up Friday. Oh, my goodness. We've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for this. I'm excited. I just, I, we pray that you leave here filled up that you are we are gathering at the well to be filled up some of us are coming tired some of us are coming full that we can share with others some of us are coming broken some of us are just coming so we just want you to sit at the table that has been prepared for you and receive what you need that you may walk away feeling better feeling stronger more confident and restored amen so we are here this evening with our special guest. We have Alonzo McCann, Minister Al McCann. We have um, Roger Johnson and we have Dewan Turner. We also have Minister D. McGee and Dr. Jacqueline Nelson and Minister Lisa Goss. We thank you for joining us as we continue our discuss discussion on restoration. We've been talking about it all month. First, Dr. Nelson brought her message. Then last week, Minister D brought a powerful message. And this evening, we are going to be um, filled up by what this team, this dynamic team of men will bring her. And guess what? They are the new owners of Three Men and a Couch Counseling and Therapy Services. We, this is, this is so needed in our community. The ministry being led by men, therapy, counseling. It is so much needed and I thank God for it. I thank God for them. I thank God for step for them stepping out on faith. I thank God that they are sharing their gifts with the world because we don't know who God has already prepared to send their way, to send into their offices. We, we don't know, but what we know, God has chose them to do it. So we celebrate them and we're going to support them in any way that we can, amen. So as we move forward, we are going to go into prayer and then we are going to hear what these men, these dynamic men have to say to us this evening. Amen. Minister Al, you want to lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let us go to God in prayer. God, our Father, how we love you and honor you. God, we thank you for this time and this place um, as we share, oh God. God, we share with those who are uh, find themselves, maybe find themselves broken. Um, and we just uh, give you honor um, as you give us the strength and the skill, God, to go down into the, the miry pits mm. and help um, yeah, those yeah. from places that we have been ourselves. Yes. And so, God, we love you. And we just ask you right now to touch this place, touch this um, um, call, oh God, over Facebook, over Zoom, over whatever um, airwaves, we might reach someone tonight, oh God. Yes, God. God, we are praying that they feel you, oh God, that if they close they, their eyes, oh God, they'll feel you. And yes, maybe, yes, just maybe yes, someone will reach out, oh God, tonight for life-saving help. Yes. And so God, this is our prayer in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. 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 So we are going to give you the floor. One, one thing we left off with yesterday that I want to ask because we couldn't get in deep into it because we were only taking 15 minutes. But why is it important for us to hear and talk about um, restoration from a male's perspective? Well, one of the reasons that it is important, uh, Minister Lisa, is that um, unfortunately for men, especially African-American men in the African-American community, um, we have been uh, bred um, to, to you know, fight it out, that we don't need you know, any, any help. And um, we don't need to uh, uh, <laughs> go and, and sit down and share all of our problems um, with somebody else. Um, that we can do it, we can do it ourselves. Um, we just believe that that narrative has to change. The narrative has to change that 
when we are helping, when we need help, when we find ourselves um, um, out on a ledge, you know, that uh, we may hear uh, one of my favorite scriptures in, in, in Second Kings, you know, we may not hear God teaching others that, you know, we may not hear God um, when the thunder roars or the lightning flashes, but sometimes we can journey with somebody to the point where they can hear that still small voice um, telling them that they, they have help, um, telling them that, 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 that um, you know, God will never leave them, nor will God ever forsake them. And men just, men in particular need to hear that. And I know that as churchgoers, we see that as a, uh, you know, as a, maybe a church soliloquy, you know, that uh, there they go, you know, talking about uh, uh, God is always, you know, with me, um, but simply in faith, you know, he is. And so, and it's a journey, you know, it's a journey. Um, you know, on this line right here, we have some survivors, you know, as I look, and I don't know if they can see everyone who's here, but, you know, we have some survivors. We have some who, who have been sick, who have been hospitalized for, for long periods of time. We have some who on here who, who, who are out on that ledge that I talked about. And the only thing that we could do was listen for God in a still small voice. And so um, that's, that, that's where we come from. We come from a, a journey um, that, uh, you know, that we all have been on. And uh, from hypertension to cancer to every other ailment that you can think of, you know, we have uh, we have we've been there, man, and we've journeyed through it. Um, our families have had to journey through it. And um, but you know, it's more important, you know. Now I won't say more important, but it is very important as men think men go through this thing thinking that they have to keep all of that stuff on their shoulders. You know what I'm saying? I've got to carry the house. I got to do this and I have to do that all by myself. And I can't talk to nobody. Well, no, bro, it's somebody you can talk to. It's somebody you can talk to, you know, and, 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 and they are God-centered. They are God-centered. Roger, you got anything you want to add? Yeah, I, I, I would I'd, I'd agree with everything you said there. Uh, and I would add that one of the things that, that uh, males in general are, are uh, Condition to do uh, and, and African American males specifically is we we don't use our words. You know we've been conditioned to use our bodies, uh, mm. you know, and when we use our words, typically they're 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 angry. Uh, with when you think about it, is is uh, counter to 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 the roots of of, of African Americans because we have this long tradition, oral tradition you know, going back to Africa, where everything was done with our words. You know, we told our, you know, we told our life stories with our words. We, we told our family histories with our words. And we've, you know, we've moved away from that, uh, you know, and, and, and to our cost and not to our benefit. So I, I would, I would agree with everything that uh, Brother Al just said there and just add to that. that we, we need to start understanding that, uh, just as he said, there are a lot of people that you can talk to. You need to seek out uh, the people who are going to be talking to you and going to, you know, that are trying to help you. Uh, I think it's important to understand that within that group of people that that you can talk to, you can talk to some people who don't have your best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you, you know, it's it's extremely important to to look for God, look for godly people. Um, you know, look for somebody who's trying to to move you in a direction of 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 you know well being of, of health and uh, you know and I think ultimately success. Duan, yeah, I would like to just to point out of what you're speaking of the importance of true restoration. Mm -hmm. And the true restoration of how I see it is not just spiritually so, but also physically so. Mm. And so what I'm saying, spiritually so, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that when the man is in restoration or restored in that perspective, 
everything else falls in order, right? His family, mm -hmm. right? His children, his friends um, on the job because he has truly been restored because we have that, that positioning and that power to affect our environment. And I'm just pretty much saying of like mm -hmm. a man being in place, right? So look at it as a man being in a restored place of mm -hmm. the rippling effect of that and how far that can travel within our, not only homes, but our communities. And also I would like to add for the physical aspect of true restoration is in our health, taking a look at our health of say of our, our diets of what we eat and some of the things that we, we shouldn't do to our body. And now I'm speaking more of, of in the neighborhood of things that uh, individuals have problem with say drinking or individuals have problems with drugs, substance abuse. And so it's important to have your physical restoration also that can also affect the mind in a lot of aspects and ways and how you carry yourself and what you do in society. Mm -hmm. And so with that, of the true importance of true rest restoration um, of us as men, um, being in that place to let it be known that you can share your problems with somebody. Mm -hmm. And it, it is not a sign of weakness. It is not a sign of being not able to deal with the heavy circumstances that we deal with in our society as African-American men that we see on the media and in the news every day. I like that. Thank you, Dewan. Dewan had his preaching voice on right there. Y'all hear me? <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can we talk? Can we talk about that just for a minute? About that, you know, when the man, when the man, when the men begin to say, it's all right to talk about it. It's all right to ask for help. That is powerful. And the, the trickle down effect when you said when restoration starts in the with the man in the household. The benefit of that, the benefit of that, I, I, yeah. Well, you know what? I, I love when you you put that 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 end piece on there when you said when men talk about it in the household, mm -hmm. you know, because when we talk about it in the household, let's just say you know we talk about uh you know those uh, those brothers, you know, like myself that you know I'm the, I'm I'm the man, you know what I mean? In my household, everybody is supposed to. You know, I'm supposed to be the head of my house, mm -hmm. you know? And so being the head of my house, you know, I'm the example, you know what I mean? It's like not my words, but also my, my, my actions, mm. you know, my actions lead. And so um, to shed a tear, to ask for help, those are things that are, that are, that are, that are very important, you know, in leading our household, you know, um, how, um, we're seen, especially at, again in our community, you know, we're not always seen um, in a positive light, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it, it's important for as men, you know, to as Dwan, you know, talked about, you know, being the physical part of being present. You know, I'm present, but not only am I present, you know, I'm a leader in my house, you know, by my actions. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, how far does it go? Um, for a young man, I mean, I mean, how far does it go, you know, to be a young man growing up in your household and you've got another man who hugs you, you know? You have mm -hmm. another man that tells you, you know, it's okay to talk about me. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's okay when you have um, uh, 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 an issue you know, to talk to your mom about it, talk to your dad about it, you know, it's okay. And so now uh, we begin to break um, down generational curses, mm -hmm. you know, because unfortunately it is a generational, it is part of a generational curse, you know, and the African-American community to not cry, to not hug, to not do those things, man up. You know, I can, remember, I can remember, uh, uh, my, my father was not in the house, but I can remember getting punched in the chest by my older brothers talking about some dog, you better stop crying, man up, you know, instead of grabbing me and bringing me in and, and hugging me and, uh, and telling me, you know, it'll be okay, we're gonna walk this walk together, you know? 
And that's important that, that I always talk about that journey. I remember the book, I remember the, we all, you know, um, 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 most of us on here have, you know, come through Ashland. We've got one Ashland, even one Ashland a junk, um, a, a professor on here. You know, that book that we read called The Skill Helper. Mm -hmm. you know? And in that book, The Skill Helper, you know, it talked about journeying with someone, mm -hmm. you know, that we are skilled helpers to journey with someone to heal, to healing and to journey with someone to wholeness. Mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, you know, that's important. I mean, it just, like I said, it just goes a long way to be a leader in your house. And I lead in my house with a hug. I lead in my Amen. house with my, Amen. My, Amen. my children that I love you. You know, I'm a leader in my house, you know, when I, and I don't have a problem shedding a tear, okay. you know, in, in celebration and in pain. I don't have a problem with that, you know? And so as a man, I mean, and we're changing, I mean, that's just, you know, we have to begin to just kind of change that dynamic because it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. you know? just doesn't happen enough. So that's it. Roger, Dewan. I, I want to uh, piggyback on that. And and in case there's somebody out there listening who's, who thinks, you know, they've, they've torn up, a, you know, they've done so many things that, you know, they've, they've sort of ruined something. That, that's not the case. We're, we're talking about re restoration tonight. Mm. Um, <laughs> It, it, I have my my own personal testimony is that my children saw me. First of all, I think it's important that we understand that whether or not we're the leaders or not, we are modeling leadership. Mm -hmm. mm. Literally by default. Mm -hmm. If a man is in the house, he's leading you. And and you know, once again, the implication there is that. You know, you can lead them the right way or you can lead them the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, but my my children literally watched me grow through some things, uh, you know, throughout my life. You know, when, uh, you know, I, I was diagnosed with cancer, they saw me, you know, they, they walked with me through that. Uh, but just seeing and, and I, I'll never forget one day my, my middle daughter. Uh, really blessed me because she told me, she said, you know, you're not the same guy you were five years ago. Mm. And I'm glad about that. And I said, so am I, you know, um, and my, 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 I have three daughters. I, I thought I, I grew up in a, in a household with nothing but boys. And uh, when I had my own family, I realized then that God has a huge sense of humor. Uh, you know, because he placed me in a household. With, I grew up in a household with nothing but testosterone. Mm. And uh, my own family was nothing but estrogen. You know, so I had to, you know, it was a lot of, uh, it, I had, a, I think, a huge learning curve uh, as it relates to to having to not yell. I remember my kids used to say, your, your speaking voice is a yelling voice, you know, and all those types of things. So they just allowing people to see you grow mm -hmm. uh, plants. Uh, not only does it model for them that, that, you know, change can occur, but it, it plants a lot of seeds in them and it plant, and you don't know who other, who else is those seeds are being planted with. Mm -hmm. You know, I see some of my daughter's friends out, you know, I, might, I remember seeing one in, in Whole Foods one day and she just came up to me and she said, I was so glad to have you as a second dad, you know. And, um, you know, I, it hadn't occurred to me that I was doing any of that. Mm. But uh, it, it's those things that we, I think we, men, especially have to realize, this isn't saying anything, I, I, I don't want to say anything about uh, the households where a mother is, you know, a woman is running a household. I'm not saying that, they're not doing their job or anything, but men, when we are in the household, we, we, we by default are, are the leaders. And then that's just the way it is in nature. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we need to understand that, you know, no matter what you, you always have an opportunity to change and, and uh, become productive to, you know, put those things behind you that are behind you. Whether you keep remembering them or not, they're behind. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can, you can, you know, I talk to clients and students all the time about 
you know, you, you can continue to hold on to the past, but everybody, you know, the, the future is coming literally every second of every day. So holding on to the past is, is you know, not, not going to be benefit you. I'm not saying forget the past, but you, you don't want to live there. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I guess, you know, it's never too late to step into your present, you know, with the mindset of moving on into your future. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Roger. I see, Dee, you have your, your hand up. You wanted to say something? Absolutely. Um, I think what you three men are offering is so incredibly uh, critical, needed, and I, I would even venture to say welcome. Mm -hmm. I, I was raised in a house with five brothers and a dad. And my brothers could not ever show sensitivity, weakness, um, slightness, where the two girls, myself and my sister, we, we, we were afforded that. In fact, it was welcome. We were supposed to be weak. Um, mm. I, in my house, we couldn't even um, answer the front door. A man had to answer the door. If that doorbell rang, my mother, myself, or my sister went to it. We got checked quick because mm. my father's thought was, you don't know what's on the other side of that door. A man needs to answer that door. Mm -hmm. And even when my brothers, um, they were into sports and what have you, they couldn't come home and complain. They had to suck it up just suck it up. And I think the time has come um, in the 21st century. The men need to know that there's other men that have been there, done that, that understand where they're coming from. And they can talk to men because what I have found as a woman, men get tired of talking to women. <laughs> y'all love us, y'all respect us. Yeah, you know, you you honor us, but you need another brother, another man, another male perspective to really be able to talk to. And what you're offering is exactly that. And I think it's critical. And I've got a grandson I'm going to hook you out up with. <laughs> and thank you, Minister D. As, as you were, were talking about um, being restored, a restored man in the household. How important is it for your children, your wife, your family to see your brokenness, to see your suffering? Because when you're talking about after you have suffered a little while, that he himself will restore you. How important is it to allow your family, your children, your sons to see your suffering and then also know that you are relying and depending on God to heal and restore you instead of hiding it? and maybe pretending that you healed yourself, you know, or, mm. you know, do you know what I'm saying? How important is yeah, it for yeah. them to see yeah. it and to know that's who restored yeah. you? Yeah. Could I, could I, I, I would, Absolutely. I would like to, to just add of, of what we speaking about is the old saying that it's um, easier said than done to let it be known that we understand it, that it's difficult. And uh, to point out what you just um, asked about, uh, it's important to be authentic. Mm -hmm. It's very important to be authentic, to have that restoration, to be able to be effective in your life. So if you're not there, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But admit that you're not there, right? Okay. Don't just go along with the wagon because it ain't, it ain't happening. And I was like what I was saying with, from the Skilled Helper book, that's where we are supposed to walk down that road with you until you get there, because I get it. I can get some of the bad habits, some, some of the bad embedded habits from childhood that's been with us about toughness. And, and some would have that same stance or stubborn stance that look, tough is tough. I don't care what you're saying, how's about whatever, I've been doing all right so far and this and that, I understand all that. But it's the fact of able to get a little crack in 
for the ears to hear and begin to listening to get down to some of the cores of what's going on, especially with the African American men. And being authentic in your household. So that to mean admitting when you're wrong, mm. apologizing when you're wrong. Wow. It's all, yeah. it's all right to forgive, <laughs> right? It's all right to give off non verbal communication love. Right. It's like and it would come to mind to me of uh, is, is uh, the, the Apostle John, mm. who, as we read in scripture, was always leaning on Jesus. And so and you can see as the other disciples, especially Peter, them had different um, 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 say about that, you know, against that. But I'm saying that to say that it's all right of what I was saying to show that in the household to your loved ones, to your daughters, to your sons, to your wife to whoever it may be, it's okay to give off the nonverbal and the verbal commitment and dedication to love and change. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and being, uh, authenticity is really, really important. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I think one of the things everybody needs to admit is that typically, I know growing up, uh, you knew who was a punk and who wasn't. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we just talked about that. Go ahead, Raj, okay, but, <laughs> but um, so it, it's not like you know when you see somebody that you know isn't a punk, you know, engaging with their feelings, engaging with their emotions. You you know we we need to understand that, that okay that that's important to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is extremely important to see. Uh, and uh, we do, we have to, it, it's something that you have to learn to do. Just, it's, I think about the book, uh, Carter G. Woodson's book, you know, the, the miseducation of the Negro. Uh, you know, so much of what men think, uh, you know, or, or this, this society uh, tries to promote as being a man is, is, is miseducation. So if, if if you've been miseducated, you don't correct that by just ignoring the miseducation. Now you have to become educated on what it is. So it's important to stop it on one end, you know, stop walking in one direction. But it is equally important and probably more important. And now you, as we say, repent. And what, what does repentance mean? To turn away from that thing and move in the other direction. Mm -hmm. And I think we see that in uh, going back to what we're talking here. You know, when you read First Peter, I, I know um, I have a note at the beginning of, uh, of, of the epistles of Peter that said this is Peter's personal testimony about what it takes to follow through as a Christian because he failed at it. He knows what it means to fail. But by the time we, you start reading these letters or these epistles, you realize, okay, he, 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 he got past the time, you know, the denying of Christ the three times on the night he was, uh, you, know, uh, on, you know, during the, the passion and everything. And now he's moving forward. Mm -hmm. It's extremely, that, that whole restoration piece. And as it relates to what, you know, who wrote those two epistles uh, with Peter, it's extremely important to realize he did, as just as Dewan just said, he recognized, wait, I was wrong. Now I need to do something else. You know what? Also, Roger, when you talk about the miseducation, do you believe, do you all believe that some of that started, some of that rooted from generational traumas? And we need to deal Absolutely. with those things. Yes. We need to deal with those things, you know. Um, and we know where the, we know the generational traumas. We know where they came from. We know why, but do we address them? And it's hard to address them with our elders, right? So it's our responsibility to now talk to the young adults, you know, the people who come to see us, the people who sit across from us, you know, across from our desk and in ministry and wherever that we begin to give a different perspective other options then don't so i think what 
Go ahead, Minister Al. And I was just going to say, you know, what they, I think a word that they use today is changing the narrative. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, we do believe that it's, it's our responsibility to change the narrative, to yeah. change the narrative, not only for the generation that's coming behind us, but the, to kind of stand in. So I got the generation coming behind me in my left hand, and I've got that generation that went before me in my mm -hmm. right hand, you know, and, and it's, it's a pool to kind of bridge, to kind of bridge that gap together, you know, because it's, it's very, I mean, it's very important. I mean, we talked about uh, millennial. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, you know, it was a big conversation about, you know, millennial, millennials versus generation X, millennials versus, you know, baby boomers versus the silent generation, you know, and now we, you know, we got that next generation that's, that's even more wow, you know, the generation that's coming after, you know, that's coming after the millennials, you know, and so, but it's very important. Here's, here's something that I want to, I want to say, and I stop like that because I want to be, uh, um, give some strong emphasis to this is that um, in, in changing the narrative, you know, one of the things that we have to do is we have to learn the language of that generation that's coming behind us. You know, it's kind of like the, the five love languages. You know, we have to be able to understand um, what we're seeing. We have to be able to understand, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what, what a person's love is. You know, it makes no sense to, to say, you know, I have no clue as to what any of uh, the love languages are, uh, but I'm on, I'm on, I'm going to speak in this one, you know, or I'm on, I'm going I'm to act in this one, you know. We have to learn to love, so we have to learn to communicate uh, with those uh, uh, the generations before. And I'll tell you, the funny story is that I was having a conversation with my daughter. Can y'all believe that my daughter Zion is now officially a senior in high school? Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Diane is a senior in high school. And we were having a conversation um, the other day. And um, the conversation was she had got a letter um, from a school. And I was like, wow, Zion, that's cool. You know, you need to fill that out and send it back. And she immediately walked over, opened the garbage can, and threw it in the garbage. Uh, I'm like, why you do that, Zion? And, uh, and I'm like, you know, I'm going and I'm giving this spiel about, you know, you never count anything out. You never know. This may be the school that gives you this. Just going on, on and on. And she said, well, daddy, everything that's in that pamphlet is online. I can go online and read everything that they sent me and more. And she turned around and walked out of the room. I'm like, I want to throw a shoe at her right now, you know, but it's, it's you know what I'm saying? It's true. And so, uh, you know, what is a, uh, what is a person's truth? You know, am I speaking in a language that they completely understand? You know, I can stand, we can all stand in the pulpit because we're all, I think everybody on here is a minister. And so we can stand in the pulpit and we can talk all day long. We can, we can reference um, um, Holman New Testament commentary. We can do all of these things, but if a person does not understand, like we get up there and we start talking about, you know, the hermeneutic, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm speaking of here, and all, and the person sitting down there is like that part, that part. Yeah, what 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 are you talking about? Yeah, I have a clue. And so that that person has left and has not learned anything. They they're not the better for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, you know, when you, when you, when you talk about that, you know, changing, when you talk about that, and I use that word, the narrative, mm -hmm. learning, you know, learning uh, um, what a person does, you know, and as, listen to this, and as therapists, you know, one of the things, one of the greatest um, attributes that we have to have is the, the, the ability to listen. Yeah. You know? The ability to listen, not to think that we have, you know, all of the answers, you know, just the ability to listen. And I'm going to tell you something. That is a hard thing for Al McCain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> In my own household, I would say that. That is a hard thing, you know, because when I began the conversation with my daughter, I began that conversation as I am dad. I know everything follow my lead 
And when she said what she said, I said, I am dad. I know nothing. Let me listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that is fair. That's like <laughs> you, you have to put that scripture on it out where I think it's in Proverbs. You say, be slow to speak and swift to hear. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. In, James, in James too. Mm -hmm. I think Minister Minister Deed, was there a question you wanted to put out here? You are mute. Not, not right now. I was just listening to Minister Al, and it's funny how we find out how little we actually know. We we do think we know it but it's what we don't know yeah. that we don't know where we get caught at and a lot of people don't realize yeah. it's a whole world out here we don't know anything about but you have to grasp that and understand i don't know everything mm -hmm. i don't even know what i don't know until i'm exposed to it right and that's that's what Zion did to you. She exposed you to it. And and that's what we, we know do. It and that's what we are supposed to do. Yeah. Expose yes. people to the benefit and the blessing um, and the availability of restoration through Christ Jesus. That's 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 what we're supposed to do. Absolutely. As well. Yeah. Let people know. And um, you know, another thing, I, I was looking at a uh a particular thing where it talks about, you know, it says God will restore, repair whatever is damaged. So mm -hmm. the believer will be able to face up to whatever lies ahead. You know, and that's the thing. And, 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 and that, that right there, there's one word that can capture all of that. And one of the things that we want to constantly do is talk about hope. Mm. You know what I mean? It was just talk about hope, you know, and that's important. I mean, that is important to the, uh, to the uh, um, ah, the most seasoned Christian, the most seasoned Christian, especially the older that we, you know, the older that we get, or um, as health challenges arise um, and all those things, you know, it is a daily battle to grasp for hope, mm -hmm. to grasp for hope and, um, and, um, you know, we can, uh, being that, you know, our uh, um, goal tonight is to talk about, you know, um, men and restoration and things of that nature. Um, it is important to just say, you know, uh, we do not get on here and say that men have all of the answers. Mm -hmm. no, we do not get on here and, um, you know, when we don't have all of the answers, you know, that's where we, you know, refer, you know, outward, you know what I mean? And then yeah. we also have to refer upward, mm -hmm. you know, we have to refer outward, we have to refer upward because, um, you know, hope is a daily battle. It's a daily battle. It's a daily battle. It's a daily battle. It's a daily battle. And so, uh, you know, that's it. We just need to know in, in Christ Jesus, um, there's always, you know, there's always hope. Mm -hmm. There's always hope, you know. And, and as uh, counselors, as count, sorry about that. You know, I stepped on there. But no, go ahead. Go ahead. As counselors, one of the things we have to be, especially if we're gonna, if, if we're going to, to, to counsel and minister and do therapy in in a marginalized, broken community, which we we are yeah we have to be agents of hope mm -hmm. if, if if we are not presenting hope to somebody then we need to stop talking to them mm -hmm. and and refer them to another counselor or or we have to be agents of hope mm -hmm. and 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 oh go ahead to have had the experience the lived experience of having your prayers answered you know of being restored then you you can offer that hope to someone else to hold on a little while longer that life can be better you can 
become who you want to become. You know, you can be stronger. You know, we offer that hope when we, we have lived that experience of being hopeless and then being recipients of God's faithfulness, restoration, you know, mm -hmm. blessing. Mm -hmm. It, 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 mm -hmm. it, we can offer it, but you know, it, it saddens me uh, sometimes when people feel like they forget where the blessings come from and they take all the glory, you mm -hmm. know, especially when people say, no, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. Well, they, they, you know, when they take all the glory, you forget. And so how do you offer something that you don't even acknowledge? And mm -hmm. so it's, 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 it's important for us to always remember, always remember. Some people like to forget their past. Some people like to forget their pain. Some people like to forget that they had a life before, you know, they were saved or whatever, before they, you know, walked down the aisle, before they accepted Christ. They like to forget who they were. But I think as Dr. Nelson has says, we can't throw apart, we can't throw away any parts of our lives because it don't belong to us to throw away. Mm. And those are the places that God allows us to minister from and pour out hope, yes. joy, you know, all those things. So I think it's mm -hmm. important. To yeah. and I, I just wanted to say uh, on that hope of, of coming off of our was saying, and emphasizing the battle of hope every day. Mm -hmm. And that's a reality in our society, the battle of hope. And to maintain and even have a grasp of hope, you gotta have a resume of failures. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a resume of fear. You gotta have a resume of um, unbelief, yeah. and lack of faith, yeah. disbelief, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to be able to get to, like you were saying, a position of hope. And that's what it's about. And I just wanted to emphasize that, that it just ain't like you wake up and say, oh, hope is there and it's on my shoulder. No. It's in all yeah. of my heart. No, it's a lot of pain. No. Like you were saying, uh, Minister Lisa, and a lot of different uh, hardships and things to the point where I say, well, look, I ain't got no other choice mm -hmm. but to have hope in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... it's um, it reminds me of a minister I heard on the radio years ago, and he was saying in his sermon, he said, look, I'm not a gambling man. He said, if I got to gamble, he said, I'm going to put all my money on Christ. Mm -hmm. And and that was been like my my sentiment, you know, of all things in this earth. Of, if, if I got to gamble, I'm going to gamble it all on Christ. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't know, Roger, did you know Dwan had some T.D. Jakes in him? I'm like, oh. <laughs> 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 uh, well, we went to school together for two years, man. I didn't know you had some Jakes in you. Go ahead. You <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that he said, uh, and I just love it, and I told this to Lisa last night, and um, I have to, you know, as, 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 as ministers of the gospel, as as ther licensed therapists, um, you know, we have to remember what T.D. Jakes once said that, uh, he said that um, my job as a Christian is the fact that I'm a beggar showing another beggar where the crumbs are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a beggar showing another beggar where the crumbs are. And uh, that's, that's uh, if I had to look, if I had to sum up you know, men and all of us in counseling, but men in counseling, if I had to sum it up, is you know, uh, was three brothers who uh, uh, are looking for to sh three brothers who are trying to show others where the crumbs are, you know, because that's uh, you know, that's kind of you know what, what life is sometimes. Life is just the you know, we talk about hope, it's scrambling and scratching, trying to find crumbs. You know what I mean? I'm just scrambling and scratching, trying to find, you know, crumbs. And, uh, you know, before I pass it on uh, to Roger on this, on this topic, 
um, because I don't believe he's had opportunity to speak, you know, one of my favorite books, um, Charles Whitfield, Healing the Child Within, you know, Charles Whitfield talks about, um, you know, us attempting to find, you know, that inner child, you know, that's that, that's that authentic person inside of us. That's that authentic um, little boy or little girl who is inside of us, who is um, pure in um, their reception of love. They're pure in their giving of love. Um, they're just pure in all them things. And they have not, um, you know, scratched the surface of hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Charles Whitfield says that, you know, all of us have that inside of us. But at some point in life, that little boy or little girl, you know, is hurt and removed. And, it, and it's screaming who is there inside of us and they're screaming to be heard, you know, and ours is, is to help, um, is to help them um, um, get in touch with that little boy or little girl that's screaming inside to be heard, you know, that's screaming inside to be heard. I know for me, I have to remember that uh, often. In fact, I was about to say daily, I'm thinking second by second, Mm. You know, sometimes I'm I, sometimes I start crying and sometimes I, I'm walking around and trying to figure out what's wrong. And um, I hear Dr. Nyria say, uh, Al, what's the little boy inside of you saying right now? You know, and that allows me to slow down a little bit and to begin to listen f- for what the little boy is saying. I mean, I had to do that today. I had a conversation today and it was a, a conversation um, that was true. But it 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 uh, it, uh, it, uh, it was a bitter pill to swallow. It was a bitter pill to swallow, and I simply had to just you know say, "Al, what is your little boy saying?" You know, my little boy, my little boy got a name. My little boy's name was uh, uh, when I was growing up. My godfather, them uh, that's that's Shadow. He's the, our other therapist uh, yeah. on the call tonight. Um, but. Uh, my god yeah uh, my godmother uh she used to call me uh uh minnesota facts y'all remember the old pool player yeah, yeah. Minnesota? Yeah. Was, and so growing up when i was living with her you know they called me uh mini you know and i often say that uh that authentic part of al the little boy inside of al mccann name is mini you know minnesota facts mini um, and then there's uh, Big Al, you know, and Big Al is dog beat dog, you know, and uh, sometimes when my back is to the wall, um, I don't ask, you know, uh, Minnie, what's going on? You know, I revert to, uh, you know, to Big Al, you know, when, even though my back is against the wall, it's a situation. It could be. It could be a a conversation. It could be an argument. Um, there is a uh, um, a time when many um, is is screaming to speak out, to simply say I love you, to simply get a hug. You know, and so that's uh. Anyway, go ahead, Roger. I, I think it's important to understand a lot of times when 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 you have to give hope is when you're in a hopeless situation a lot of times. Yeah, I can't, I remember I think it was about three years ago, you know, within the course of, of literally three days, I talked to three different brothers and it, it was during a time I was talking to these brothers because I was like, I'm going through some stuff. I need to talk to these bro. And uh, I literally talked to three different guys who um, the next day after I talked to them said, man, I'm so glad I talked to you last night. Cause I was literally one, one of them told me that I had a gun in my hand. I was getting ready to, to, to end this thing. Mm. You called and, you know, and, and I remember sitting and, and, like Al is saying here, a lot of times I I have to be I can be so focused and and occupied with certain things that that all I'm seeing is 
is literally what's in front of me. And, uh, you know, I was sitting there saying like, okay, God, you know, my problem is still right, still right in front of me. And he, he literally had to say to me, he was like, dude, you were just, you just saved three folks' lives. Did you realize that? You know, and um, when it's put to me like that, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, you're right. But uh, we we have to understand that a lot of times when we're when we're giving out the hope, it's sometimes when we're in a hopeless situation. You know, I, I think it's very important to remember that and, and and not get so caught up in in our own stuff that we forget our you know what we always heard about uh, in counseling classes our empathic response. Mm. Uh, you know that that I, I need to so that we're clear. Uh, I, I'm uh, I'm I'm one of the three men in a couch who needs to talk to a th who has to has a therapist and talks to that therapist and talks to other people about you know my issues because I'm not I'm not perfect I'm not there I'm not that guy. Uh, I I will admit to anybody that the, the people who I've helped. It's been because God has chosen to use me as a vessel to work through me and help them. Because if it was up, and these two brothers can tell you, they, they've sat in classes and in groups with me. There's some things that can come out of my mouth where everybody is like, what? What is wrong with that guy? You know? <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I'm constantly trying to be, as, as Al said, open to, to, Understanding that 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 child within me, who, who's injured, who's scared, who gets angry, and all those other things, and, and also understanding that even with all of that brokenness, God is still gonna use me yeah. and 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 use me power. You know, I mean, I'll, I've done a lot of things uh, where um, you know I've talked about it. You know, I when in supervision and everything. I, I literally talked a kid out of killing himself right in front of him. Um, and that that wasn't because Roger Johnson understands all these different modalities. Uh, it wasn't because, you know, I'm this smart, you know, this great therapist or anything. This is because God chose to use me at that moment to save that child's life. Thank you. It was, it was something you said. It was two things, two questions I want to ask. Um, I'll start with you, Roger. You when you when you speak about seeing a therapist, we there's a there's many African American men who don't believe in therapy, who do not seek therapy. I've I've been a therapist. I kept, I don't know how many years now, but since 2014, 2012, and I've only had maybe five African-American males in my office since 2012. What is it, what can you say to compel African-American men, I'm saying African-American men, I'm putting a meat on it because that's what I'm talking about, to seek therapy? I, I think we need to, first of all, make it available. Uh, you know, when was the last time, uh, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking about it right now, you know, the, the, what we're doing, I'm getting texts from people saying, oh man, this is good. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't remember and I'm, I'm, you know, where, you know, you, you're in a, a situation where th the, th the three of us, if we were in a situation you know, we could go to a place where, you know, a church if they had a, a men's night and say, look, come talk to us. You have to make it available for guys. And you and and and, and we need to recognize that oftentimes you have to make it available to them uh in in a situation where they they feel safe and comfortable to to raise their hand and say, Yeah, I need help. Yeah. Oftentimes that's not going to be, be be done in a situation. I'll just say it where there are women involved, women around. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you see another, uh, uh, if there are women 
around, guys literally will fall in that I got to be this guy, I got to be this man, I can't be this, I can't be that. But when when I've seen the most growth, when I've seen brothers crying, is when it's just brothers around because then they can be honest. Okay. And they don't they don't feel scared. They 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 understand. Okay, these guys. I'm resonating with these guys, and you know I'll I'll, I'll come up and talk to them. You you muted Al. Thank you, you Roger. Oh, I, I was talking to therapist Shadow. Okay. <laughs> There's another but question no, you, that I. Ha oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think you gotta you gotta put make space. For for that that to happen, uh, you know, if, if 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 a pastor knows he's got a church full of guys that are having issues, he might want to have a Bible, you know, an all male Bible study and bring in mm. the parents who, who 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 can talk to you where they can say, you know, yeah, I need to rap with you, you know, and don't you know, and 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 not have to worry that somebody's gonna let everybody else know. That mm -hmm. you talk to a therapist or whatever. You mm -hmm. you gotta grow to that point. Because there was a point in my life, you know, I'm I'm sitting up here now with a with a master's degree and everything else in counseling, where if somebody had said to me, you need to go to what well, somebody did say you need to go to counseling, I was like, well, you can go to hell. You know, I ain't, I don't need no counseling, you know, and that's that's where I was. Mm -hmm. But I, I have to think about where I am now. So mm -hmm. I know what it's like not to feel comfortable or to, to feel like I can't talk to anybody or don't want to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. Lisa, can I, can I just, add, can I just mm -hmm. add this short thing on what he was saying? And yeah. also, there is a, a platform where we have to move the therapy that guys generally do, because guys do do therapy, but it's, it's, it's sometimes it'd be like getting together and let's drink mm -hmm. or getting together and getting high or just those platforms are actually a form of therapy but it's to get the message to move it across and say it's okay to bring this into a therapy session with right. the clinical therapist but to be able to a, relate a person. To, to to show to show that yes a clinical therapy but I <laughs> that's, just wanted that's to so important that. Mm -hmm. that that is so important Hold on, Roger. Were you were you finished, Dwyer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Roger. You you should be talking to somebody that's trained. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I can't stress that enough. I've I've been in a, a, a number of situations and seen a number of situations where somebody went to, you know, their deacon or their pastor. And and I'm not saying every deacon and every pastor is like this or anything, but it, um, you know, and they end up in worse shape than they were before, you know. Mm -hmm. um, That's real. So if, if, if you needed a dentist, if you had a feeling, you know, that, you know, oh my God, my, my tooth is hurting and everything else, you're not going to your pastor. You're not going to your deacon for that. You're going to go find your dentist so that that trained person can fix your tooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Thank Roger. Thank you. We are almost out of time. This has Please been go. awesome. But there's one more question. One more Please question go. I need to ask. Huh? Lisa, can I, say something? I want to say something real, just, just very, very quick. All right. I have to, I have to say this <laughs> in no stretch of the imagination. Are we saying that you should get together with your boys and smoke no. weed yeah. right. <laughs> right. That's, and that's do cocaine <laughs> and call it therapy? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that's not what Dewan is saying. So I just right. want I had to, I had to put that disclaimer out there. Go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, Dewan, you had talked about being authentic in the home. And you also said being able to engage, men being able to engage in their emotions, in their thoughts, in their feelings. Can you tell us in what ways can they begin to do that, get in touch and be comfortable um, to be authentic in their emotions, in their thoughts, in their feelings? Well, one of the ways is being able to inquire with the individuals in your household 
and mm -hmm. have them speak freely of opinions of how they see yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once you get that, we're not being defensive or trying mm -hmm. to defend anything that they're saying, but let them have freedom to describe you and all the different things of you and how you react verbally so and how you react non-verbally so. And to me, that's a beginning to okay. uh, take that information and that knowledge to begin to work on yourself and being able to make that process and that progress in doing that. Thank you. That's powerful right there. Mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. And 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 like you said, not be defensive. Yeah. That that's so important. Not be just being available to hear. We talked about being able to hear, being available to hear, and probably need to be praying about it, you know, before you mm -hmm. ask the question. I, I remember there was a time when I wanted to, and it was a, I had to prepare to ask someone, what do I bring into the room? Like when I come into the room, what kind of atmosphere do I set? Because I really wanted to know, but it took me a minute to prepare myself to ask this question because I didn't know what kind of answer that I was going to get. We, we want to believe we know what we bring into the room. We, we want to believe that, but sometimes what we bring into the room is not what we think we bring in, you mm -hmm. know? And yes. so being able to prepare ourselves for for the answer by not being defensive is 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 very very important and thank you thank you for that thank you for that this has been amazing this has been amazing i don't know about with you with your i i have enjoyed this immensely i i hope that is there anything we we've already gone over so we might as well just go ahead is there anything that you didn't get to say that you want to say, Roger, Minister Al, and Dewan. I, I want to say thank you for inviting us on here. If, I, if, we, if we haven't said that, I thank you so much, uh, Lisa. It, it, uh, yeah, thank you. I, thank I can't, you. I'm literally speechless right, right now about, about that. Yeah, this was a phenomenal opportunity. And, um, you know, we do thank you. Uh, I, I have to add what I want to add too is not only we uh, uh, piece where we talk about you know here tonight where we're talking about our mental health, but um, I, I say to any brother that happens to watch or may be wa may watch this at a later date, you know because it's on and so they you know they may come on and share, and um, you know be careful of your uh, physical health as well. You know what I mean? Um, go to the doctor, you know, get checked. You know, uh, Kool Mo D had a song out years ago. It was go see the doctor. Well, you, you may not go to the doctor and see what he would see the doctor for what Kool Mo D was talking about. But I do say, you know, go see, go see the doctor. You know, uh, um, you know, they used to talk about the prostate, talking about prostate health. And men used to say, well, I'm not going um, to the doctor to get this, you know, what they say, to get this uh, digital uh, exam that they used to do with uh, with the prostate and, and to find out about prostate cancer, which is which is really rampant in the African American male community. Uh, and it's now, one of the most curable ones. To, it, it's, yeah, if caught, yeah. if caught, time is one of the most curable ones. If caught, let me say that. And so, and and a lot of that is you have to know, you know, your 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 family history, because you can be. Uh, 35 years old and say, and the doctor will tell you, you have until you're 40 or 45 or 50 before you have to have this exam. But yet and still in your, uh, in your family, it has been prevalent. And so because it's been prevalent, you, you have a 50% more, a 50% a, a more chance of getting it. Right. I was diagnosed with it three months before my 40th birthday. You know, and the doctor said that mine was so aggressive that um, if they had have done the test when I was 35 or 36, that they may have found it in its beginning stages. And that's because of the, 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 um, the heredity piece that I didn't, you know, because my father wasn't, you know, there, I didn't have that particular side of the family's history. You know, I just didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. 
And so if you happen to, um, you know, have your family, you know, your father's or your mother and father's history of, as far as the men, then you um, do it. And I see a, a question on here that says, um, they can't wait until they're 50. And I would say if they're African-American male, don't wait until you're 50 because 50 could be too late. If I had to wait until I was 50 years old, my funeral would have been five, six years ago. And so um, it just depends on their family history. Depends on their family history. If they have any um, history whatsoever of prostate cancer in their family, then they need to be tested uh, long before their 50th birthday. Um, you know, I I'll say that. Um, and so I just say that know your family history. If you don't know your family history, then just tell the doctor, you know, hey, can you run a PSA? A PSA is a blood test. Simply they can run it when you go in for your wellness exam and they take it and it's, a PSA is called, it's a pros, um, um, specific antigen, uh, prostate specific antigen. And what it does is it, it just tests, it tests those levels in your body and uh, anything over a four, yours should be a four um, or less. Anything over that, then you probably would need a biopsy. But, you know, Roger is correct. It is one of the most curable ones, but, actu and, but in all actuality, it is um, the most curable one. But listen, um, it is one of the highest, it has one of the highest rates of death in the African-American community. So, you know, when you're going to your doctor, just ask him to run a PSA for you and simple blood test. And so don't be a, when my, uh, my, um, my um, radiation oncologist, his name is Jordan Mayer. And he's a, he's a uh, cool Caucasian uh, doctor and he has a program and it's called Man Up. And mm. he, goes, he goes around to different churches and he just talks to the men and telling the man up, get the blood test, you know, get the test, and then we can go from there, you know, man mm -hmm. up. So, um, yeah, I, like I, yeah, I just wanted to say that. I wanted to say, you know, from the that that piece, go get tested. So, Minister you know, Al, yes, what is what is the age that they're now saying that men should start checking themselves out? I think I put a piece in there that says when you feel strange go see why. Right. Because um, a, a lot of times prostate cancer doesn't have symptoms the way mm -hmm. that we normally would think they would have. So we got to be mindful of our regular checkups that, you know, men have to have like women do. But what, what, are, they, what are they saying is the age where we need to start really, men need to start getting those prostate exams? Could I, well, really, could I answer that out? You, you, you can, but well, let, let me got stage four. Go ahead. The Dr. Jack, um, most of these numbers, when you hear, you know, women should start getting their breasts checked at certain at this age, or men, you, when you hear those numbers, you need to understand that those numbers are based on data that are taken from white America, who live differently than we do, who. Who, who have more, you know better health care often have health care and all those other things if, if, if it's at 50 if, if, if the if the American uh, Medical Association is saying get checked at 50 African Americans need to move 10 years ahead of that and that's across the board for for women and men you really yeah, need that's, to a, that's a sad that's a sad bar for me and you that's a sad bar for me <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, because also I Roger, you're taking you know, not only that you're talking about that. That is one thing, but you start talking about uh, family history. That well, yeah, that too. Another yeah. piece, and so you you know you have to look at it because again, you know, I was three months before my 40th birthday when I was diagnosed, and the doctor said that uh, for me because my um, Gleason scores were so high. And things of that nature that go along with it. That uh, if he if they did a, a, a genetics study on me, that they would find um, that um, on one side of my one side of my family or uh, or both that um, that they would see a high 
um, that they would see, you know, where prostate cancer was uh, was prevalent, especially when you start when we go back um, early on, we go back into uh, the 40s and the 50s where prostate cancer didn't have a name, you know, how they came up with this prostate piece was, and I know we're truly past time, one, how they came up with it was was they started doing a test. A lot of men, they, they were showing were coming up with bone cancer. And so they started doing a lot of tests and they found that the bone cancer, it, it was actually prostate cancer that had spread to the bones. And so, and, and that's how they really came up with this whole, you know, mm -hmm. came up, you know, gave it a name and things of that nature. And it came from just a study of men with, and like you said, it, it, it probably, I mean, I'm sure it was, um, you know, Caucasian men, you know, but when you start adding, you know, in family history, you start adding in, you know, uh, uh, I hate to use, I hate to use the other one because Dr. Mayer actually says himself that there is no study that actually says diet, um, you know, when you start talking about prostate cancer and some other cancers, there's no actual study that says diet plays a part in it. Um, but there is um, from a genetic standpoint. Right. That's why they, they say that prostate cancer is asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. You don't have any precursors to it. So right. that's why it was so it's so hard to diagnose because it's usually um, so so far up into its, its malignant stages when you discover it because you don't have any symptoms really that tell you to go and do it. So that's right. right. Cause you know, doc, my, my, uh, I, I, my funny story, you know, with regards to that was, um, I had got a, got a, a uh, when we go back to that age, I had got a, uh, um, a trainer and, uh, you know, I was working out and I was doing all of these things. And, uh, uh, just so happens that my doctor went out of private practice. When he went out of private practice, I had to get a new doctor. I got a new doctor, and in his blood work, he gave me a PSA. I, my doctor used to always say, "You know, you you know, you just a few years away from having to do the test. You a few years away from having to do the test." And as men, we know what the test is when we start talking about prostate cancer. Well, this doctor did a PSA on me, and uh, when he called me, and he you know ran off all of the things. And he started talking about, uh, you know, he said, well, you know, your PSA he ran off across all my cholesterol and all those other things. And he said, well, your PSA, is, it concerns me. And I'm like, my PSA, you know, what does that stand for? You know, pretty sexy Al. I said, yeah, I'm working, <laughs> you know. And uh, he said, no, prostate specific antigen. Yours is, um, again, I was 39 years old and my PSA should have been below four and mine was almost 40. And so, which meant that it was uh, aggressive and, uh, of course, way up there for somebody. So imagine if it was 40 at the age of 39, if I had to wait until I was 50 years old. Well, I wouldn't be here if I had to wait until I was 50 years old. So, um, you know, that's what Dr. Nelson was talking about when she said, it's not, you know, it doesn't, as asymptomatic. I never had, I never had any symptoms um, um, I never had any symptoms whatsoever. If he hadn't took that test, you know, that, that PSA saved my life. And so that's why I stopped to say to, to all of the brothers, when you go to the doctor, simply get a PSA. Just tell them, hey, can you add a PSA test to it? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm believing that this message uh, and, and the dialogue concerning prostate cancer has has been life saving for someone. I, I I just believe that. I just believe that. And so I want to thank you. I do before we go. Um, can, are there any phone numbers, um, websites, emails that you want to give out um, for your company for three men and a couch counseling and therapy services? Can we uh, can we table that for about a week because we're still. Absolutely. 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 Whenever you're ready, you can just send the information, you Absolutely. know, or come back on or whatever you need to do. 
um, we are available to, to help and to assist um, in any way that we can. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Roger. Um, Dewan, Dewan, are you a minister as well? Yes. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know. Thank you, Minister Roger and Minister Dewan and Minister Al, Minister D, Dr. Jacqueline Nelson, and um, Sister uh, Jeanette, I mean, Janelle. She's not here right now. She's on Facebook Live. We appreciate you joining us. Minister D, did you want to say anything before we, before we close? Your transparency and the honest dialogue here, I am convinced not only was it needed, mm -hmm. I just believe somebody's going back to their brother, their husband, their father, their uncle, their grandfather. They're going to somebody, first of all, to say, help is available. And then get yourself checked. This has been absolutely amazing. And I so appreciate uh, you guys taking the veil off, taking the pride and setting it aside and sharing with us, with women, so we can be better nurturers to our, our families. So thank you. Thank each of you for that. Thank you. Minister Dewan, can you pray a prayer of covering over the fathers over the men as we close. Yes, I can. And before we do the prayer, I would just like to say it was a pleasure uh, being on here. And also to let it just be known that seeing a clinical counselor doesn't take away from your manhood or your hardness as a man. Mm. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Father, for being able to come together as human beings and be able to discuss some of the positive things, Father, that's needed in our communities, for our families. Father, Lord, I pray that this word will penetrate where it need to penetrate yes, God. and let it reach, Father, beyond the Facebook Live. Yes, let God. it reach, Father, across yes, the God. lands, oh God. Yes, God. Father, we pray, Father, that you continue to strengthen the women, Father, that are so important in the lives of men. And you, Father, God. we pray also, Father, for the children, Father. The children, Father, of from the male and the female, Father. We pray that you continue to cover them, Father, with your precious blood. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We pray, we hope that you come back again once you get up and running, come back again and let's talk some more. This has been amazing. I am filled. I pray that all of you who have joined us, that you have received what has been set. God set the table, yes, seal yes. the table up. And yes, we yes. pray that you receive what you needed, what you needed to hear, what you needed to see, and what you needed to feel. Amen. Amen. Until Amen. next Friday at 6 30 a.m. Blessings on you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night.